is my life, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What hides a love? What depths of fears? When fears I still, when strife. Amen. That was in Christ alone. Um, and that was uh, Shane and Shane from uh, their album, Hymns Volume 1. Hymns Volume 1. Uh, so a good way to start this new week. Even if it's a rainy day out there, uh, it is good to be able to gather with all of you in this space. So I hope you enjoyed uh that first hymn. Today we are looking at 2 Corinthians 4, 2 Corinthians 4, beginning in verse 7, 2 Corinthians 4, verse 7. So, um, and we're going to be talking about facing our mortality. 
Um, but let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Barbara and Genevieve. Good to have you here this morning, praying for both of you. And Renetta and Michelle, welcome, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Daniel and Vinette. I'm glad you're here, holding you both in prayer. And Celia and Blanca, welcome, holding you both in prayer today. Good morning, Andrea and Gail. I'm glad that both of you are here praying for both of you this day. And Minda and Donna. Yep, Minda and Donna. Good to have you both here with us. Um, in It was good to see you yesterday and Donna coming to us from West Texas. We've been praying for you. I'm glad you're both here. Good morning. I'm so sorry. Uh, Susan and Betty, uh, welcome. Praying for both of you. I'm glad you're here. And Shelly and Ingrid, welcome. Praying for you this morning. Good morning, Augusta and Barbara Dawson. I'm glad you're here. Praying for you. And Marilyn Kuna uh, and Sheila. It's good to have you here as well. Praying for all of you as we start our days the beginning of this new week um, for all the things that God will do in and through each of our lives. I'm glad you're here. So welcome. Second Corinthians 4, and I'm going to be getting in verse 7. I, I know I say this all the time, but this is again one of my favorite passages, especially from Paul's letters, especially to the church in Corinth. So uh, we're narrowing it down. Um, uh, so if you want to turn in there as you're turning to 2 Corinthians 4, my name is Cindy Stauffer. Uh, I am blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church in New Brunswick. Uh, and I'm glad you're with us today. So let's take a look. 2 Corinthians 4, 7. And I'm going to read through 12, 7 through 12. But we have this treasure in clay jars so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are being given up to death for Jesus' sake so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Facing our mortality, and this comes from Henry Nouwen's Bread for the Journey. Some of um, the most profound writings that, that have impacted my journey have come from his writings around our mortality, around um, death and dying and life in the midst of it. Um, it's a conversation we don't always wanna have, but it is, if we are resurrection people, it is a conversation we need to have. And so I'm always thankful, grateful for theologians that, that delve into this. So today's devotion is entitled, Facing Our Mortality. He says, we all have dreams about the perfect life, life without pain, sadness, conflict, or war. The spiritual challenge is to experience, experience glimpses of this perfect life right in the middle of our many struggles. By embracing the reality of our mortal life, we can get in touch with the eternal life that has been sown there. 
The Apostle Paul expresses this powerfully when he writes, we are subjected to every kind of hardship, but never distressed. See no way out, um, but we never, we see no way out, but we never despair. We are pursued, but never cut off, knocked down, but still have some life in us, always we carry with us in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus too may be visible in our mortal flesh. Only by facing our mortality can we come in touch with the life that transcends death. Our imperfections open for us the vision of the perfect life that God in and through Jesus has promised us. We live um, in a world that fights our mortality over and over again. I don't know where I was reading recently, but they uncovered I don't know, things mixed together. But anyway, there is this, 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 um, this pursuing of, of life everlasting, uh, uh, immortality here in this space. Uh, people do all kinds of things to ensure that somehow they might be able to live forever. And when I talk with um, so many people, I, I was just recently having a conversation with someone who was talking about her deep fear of dying, deep fear that, um, she didn't know what was, she didn't fully understand what would be next. And that's a part of each one of us, you know, we, we live here, um, and we want to be able to continue, even if things aren't great, you know, we want to somehow live forever. And the good news for people of faith is that we already know that, right? Through the life, the teachings, through the persecution and death, through the resurrection and everlasting life of Jesus Christ, we know and believe and have faith that there is more, that this is not the final word. And when that is our rootedness, then we can live through those times that are really hard, through those death dealing times through the fears of diagnosis that we didn't want or through the pain that we might be feeling because we know the final word is life, not death. And there is such power in that. You know, I, I've walked with people that have faced their final days in in this amazing hope and um, I don't know, dare I say joy I guess in some ways yeah because they knew that next place that they were going and they were ready for it but I also have met people in who just know how to live because they understand um, the death that we carry in our bodies uh, is a resurrection, also led to resurrection. So you've got to walk the full story, right? Um, when we live as if the full story is at work in our bodies, leading us to resurrection hope, resurrection joy, um, then the challenges become a part of that story. And we see that in Jesus. We see um, what Jesus walked through 
never wavering. Well, he had his challenges. He had his days. Um, but trusting that the journey would eventually lead to life. And it is the same for you and for me. So today, when you face struggles, when there is pain, when things don't go, out the, go the way that you wanted them to, when it feels as if no one is listening or hears your voice, when the challenges become too much, I invite you to remember the full story. This is a part, but the full story of what Jesus has done for us. In Christ alone, my hope is found. That, my friends, knowing that, understanding the final word is a word of life. May you live today uh, in Christ alone, trusting that God is at work for your good through this day. God loves you. I got quick. I just wanted you to know that God loves you. I'll say it again later. <laughs> As we enter into this time of prayer, um, lifting each one of you up, praying um, that the words of Paul to the church in Corinth will give you hope when you are feeling pushed down or when you feel as if there are no answers or the pain is too great, the loss too much. My prayer is that you will, that God will intervene on your behalf and you will hear God's word of life. So let us pray. God, we come before you today grateful that you love us so much that you would come, that you would become mortal, that we might come to know the depth of your love, that we would see that even on our worst days, you are speaking a word of life over us. Today, Lord, we lift up our places that are hard because sometimes our mortal life is hard. Help us, Lord, to lift them up to you, to lift up our pain, to lift up our fears, to lift up the places where we have been oppressed and pushed down, to lift up our anxieties and our depression, all of the things that keep us from experiencing the fullness of life that you offer us. We lift them up to you today, Lord, that you might speak a word of life not only for us, but through us this very day. Lead us, Lord, that even in these mortal bodies, we might experience your divine breath, breathing in and through the challenges of the day ahead. We lift all of this up to you, Lord Jesus. As together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So my 
friends, today, may God speak a word of life through you, through these mortal bodies um, that others might see, uh, not ourselves, but the very light of Christ shining in and through these clay jars. God loves you, my friends. God loves you. And so do I. Have a very blessed day. And I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye, friends.